Hi all, how you doing? Um, tonight's video is uh, recovery after a heart stent placement and basically we're just going to be talking about how long it takes to recover from uh, actually getting a stent placement. Um, for me it was actually about a week longer than somebody, uh, there, there's two different ways of getting a stent. You can have a heart attack and then have a stent put in. Um, these days they normally sort of do it right away. Whenever I had the heart attack 13 years ago, you had to wait like five days before they put the stent in. Uh, what they do now is put the stent in right away. But there are other people who sort of have the feelings, uh, like jaw pain or something like that, and they would be put in the treadmill or stress, well, the stress test, and uh, they're brought in uh, one morning and prepared for the stent and then they get sent home the same night it's uh, quite it, it is you know I mean it's it's I wouldn't say it's a routine operation but I find it a routine operation because at the end of the day I'm still here to talk about it you know but uh, anyway whenever you get in a stent you basically you, you go in you have the operation where they do the dye test uh, the, you know, I'm sure you're you're all aware of what a stent is. If not, you know you can check one of my other videos. You'll find out. But it's basically, you know, putting a catheter up, you know, the inside there, uh, squirting down the dye, finding out where it's blocked, and then they put it back up again uh, with a balloon. The balloon opens it up and clears. Well, it doesn't clear the plaque, but it opens it so that you can then squirt the stent up. Stent is basically a scaffold, and then boom, it goes in. And then they close the balloon and, you know, voila, that's your stent fitted. So how long does it take to recover after that? After you actually have the stent uh, placed, uh, you bleed a good bit. So what happened to me was I had to lie still in the bed for two hours. If you're really easy to get, like, you know, that's, that's a dream for you. You're not going to find that a problem, you know. But... Um, Anyway, I lay there for the two hours, you know. It's not that I was going anywhere or had anything else to do. And uh, it healed. You know, for some people the bleeding can sort of continue a wee bit, but they'll stop the bleeding, you know. But anyway, the bleeding stops. And uh, for me, I didn't go home the same night. I went home the next morning. And I was really, really glad to get home, you know. Um, the thing is, you know, funny enough, I got a comment from a guy today uh, from Sweden. And uh, funny enough, he's the same as me. He checks out the YouTube channels and stuff. And I'm sure it's the same with a lot of us who have had stents. You know, you sort of you still worry about it. Unlike me, you know, um, he's had a stent a few years now, and I've had my 13 years. So if you're sort of new to the world of stenting, uh, you know, I'll, I'll take you through it. Right? Um, the recovery from a stent is basically, yeah, you know, the first sort of couple of well, the first week. You know, you don't do anything strenuous or anything like that there. But after a couple of weeks, you know, you're going to be all right. But for some reason, I kept, you know, I kept holding my chest and sort of feeling that something was sort of not right. There was sort of like wee pain there. But there wasn't, it's all psychological. It's all to do with mental health as well. Uh, I'm saying mental health because that's the N word these days, you know. So I just thought I'd use it. Uh, not making fun of anybody that has mental health because at the end of the day, I got my heart attack cured, got my stent in. People with mental health problems, that they, they, they can't cure that. You have a mental health problem all your life. So, uh, yeah, my condolences. Um, the, the thing is now with the stent, uh, your main thing is getting through the first year. Uh, you you got to get fit, so you do. And, uh, you know, exercise is the main thing, but you take it slowly. But the procedure as well, after a stent, is you get two tablets. Well, this is what... Uh, happened to me anyway. I sort of got the uh, aspirin uh, for the sort of the blood thing, you know, but I then got the, the other tablet, Plavax. Plavax, an aspirin, let's just say, is a blood thinner that's made, right? The Plavax is a blood thinner that is a bloody beast. Plavax is one beast of a tablet it affects your body in different ways. It affected mine in the fact that I had constipation. And uh, Jesus, 
it was really difficult going to the toilet and uh, I'm not even going there I don't want to sort of you may be eating your dinner and I don't want to sort of put you off but you know at the time that Pavax tablet not only did it make me bleed you cut yourself bleeding Jesus Christ you may as well have got a cup and held it like that there you know and uh, anyway the Plavax the, the good thing about the Plavax uh, is you know it keeps the flow from the around the stent area that's the basic reason that they give you the Plavax so that the uh, the stent the, the, the plaque won't sort of grow over it again and uh, then you're going to have a blockage yet again and the Plavax does the job it really does you know so I mean the stats are anyway, as I'm sure a lot of you know if you watched any of my other videos, that 25% uh, of people that uh, get stented uh, have to get another stent within the first year. And uh, it's just sometimes it doesn't take, you know. But if it doesn't take, it doesn't take. Um, getting a stent, I never find a stent a big operation to be honest. Uh, I, I would uh, happily go in and have another stent then pop around to the dentist and get a tooth out or get a filling. That, that's how easy I found it. I actually quite enjoyed it, you know. I was actually the centre of attention, you know, there were there were nurses there, there were doctors there, they were all sort of, you know, taking care of me and giving me attention. Never had so much attention in my life and I doubt it ever will again. It was happy days. But yeah, for me, the stent it's after you have the stent, you lie down for a couple of hours, the bleeding stops, you sort of on the mend, and that's basically it. You then have to take the aspirin and the plavax for a year, right? Now, after that year, the chances of the... Now, I'm, I'm not a doctor, all right. I've gone by the sort of stuff I've read, but the stuff I've read is uh, written by doctors. So you're getting uh, me sort of passing on what doctors have said. But after a year, if you've gone a year and you're then off the Plavax, you know, the chances are that the plaque is not going to grow by the stent. You know, it hasn't done to me. I'm 14 years into it now. And um, I would say one day, you know, probably... I will need another stent. I'm 67 now, you know, and uh, I would say, you know, one day I will need another stent, but I wouldn't be worried about it because I know my body and that's one thing you've got to learn. Know your body, you know, get used to, you know, if you feel job pain, anything like that, you know, go see the hospital. Sometimes bypass the doctor, go straight to the hospital. They maybe bring in, make an appointment for a treadmill test and something like that. If they try and fob you off, just say, no, I'm worried. I've had a heart attack before, and you know I've come here and told you. I've told my family I'm coming here, and because I'm worried of having another heart attack. Whenever you tell them something like that, there they'll they'll sort of worry about it, and they'll say, "Well, if anything happens to this guy, you know, and he's told his family that he's he, he thinks he's having a heart attack, you know, it'll come back on us." I'm not gonna say, you know, you've got to use your head to get things done, you know, but no, if you know if you do feel it, and you know you can get another stent. And you just get another stent and you go through the same procedure again and you know you just keep yourself going it's all you can do you know and 14 years later it's worked for me you know i mean i mean take a look i mean 67 years old i bet you i bet you you almost spilled your dinner whenever i said that you you probably turned around and said there's no way that guy's 67 he only looks 37 you know but you're saying 30, you only looks 37 if you've had a few drinks in you. And I'm not talking about drinks of water. But anyway, uh, stents. Uh, after you have it, a couple of hours, you're good as gold. You're ready to go home the next day because they just want to rest you and do a bit of observation. That's the only reason. Or after sort of four hours, they let you go home there and then. You know, after about four to six weeks, you're driving again. Uh, then you're back to work. You probably could be back to work even sooner than that. But you won't be driving your car because... Legally, you're not allowed to drive your car until after four weeks or something like that. But uh, the first year, that's the most important year. Get the first year over you, taking the aspirin and the Plavax. And, you know, that's your recovery from a stent. And in the meantime, in that year, do a lot of exercise. Uh, eat the right diet. Uh, don't be smoking. Believe it or not, I've actually, seen, I've actually seen people in the hospital waiting to get a stent. They'll actually pop downstairs. And go out the door and have a smoke like seriously how dumb are people really you know you know stay off the alcohol stay off all the usual crap and just get yourself in the mend and look after yourself because at the end of the day you know don't look after yourself you're just gonna end up brown bread you know
that's slang for dead, by the way. You know, just in case you didn't know. But if you're sort of from Sweden, or you're from India, or Pakistan, or America, you know, brown bread, dead, you know. But anyway, that's uh, the recovery from the stent. You look after yourself, you'll be uh, pretty recovered from a stent within uh, a year. Because it's in the first year that uh, stent would, uh, the st statistics, which I don't really like stats, you know, because it includes all the older people and stuff like that there. But I'll go into that another time. Um, but, you know, within the first year, that's whenever it, the plaque will grow back over, you know. So, and I stopped taking the plavax after a year, thank God. I felt like a new man. You know, but I couldn't find one. <laughs> you get that? Did I like how we joke or something? I was only joking, by the way. Anyway, um, I'll be back with another video. This is Monday. Um, I'll leave it to Thursday because I'm sure you good people get fed up uh, listening to my rubbish. But I just like to sort of throw it out to you all that, you know, heart disease, heart disease nowadays and heart attacks nowadays. And, you know, they're nothing. I mean, back in the day, you had a heart attack at like 50. You know, the chances are, you, you know, yeah, you were going to be sort of popping your clogs. By the way, just in case you're from blah, 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 blah. Popping your clogs means down again, you know. But uh, that doesn't happen nowadays. You know, people that are having heart attacks are living well into their sort of 80s and 90s. And uh, that it's been looking after yourself and watching out for the signs. But anyway, please uh, subscribe to my channel. I'm trying to get to 100. I'm at 65 now and I'm getting really excited, you know. So if you hit the subscribe button... Hit the like button. I love a like. Who doesn't like it? I mean, who doesn't like a like? Everybody likes a like. Gives them a wee bit of confidence, you know. And uh, if you hit that wee bell, you're probably wondering what the wee bell is for. A wee bell. If you hit that wee bell there, it uh, means if I post something, it'll go bing on your phone. And uh, then you can watch me, you know. And uh, when you, yeah, who knows, nothing better to do than watch me, you know. But there you go. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you have a stent and you've just got a stent and you're worried, um, don't be. Don't, please don't be. You know, uh, the technology now it is, is way advanced. And really, if you take your medicine and, you know, you do everything you're told, you will be fine and you will live many, many years. And the main thing as well is uh, have an optimistic approach to life after a heart attack. I spent nearly two years, three years, worrying, and like the guy in Sweden, um, looking at videos and sort of holding my heart, oh, what's wrong? And, you know, I know, I know it's not easy to sort of say that to you, because um, I worried myself for the first couple of years, and it wasn't the sort of the latter years that I sort of increased in confidence, and uh, I became more optimistic. But I think being optimistic about it helps you as well. So, anyway, what can I say? I've had an hour, three minutes on there talking about ODI rubbish. You take care of yourselves, my friends, uh, no matter where in the world you are. Um, please leave me a comment. I love hearing from you. I really do. Uh, it's nice to hear what other people have gone through, how they've coped and things like that. And, um, you know, it's nice we all sort of, you know, talk to each other, tell each other experiences. Well, I think so anyway. I, you know, but I'm different and well, I've always been different. I remember my mother, whenever I was about eight years old, saying, Arthur, you're different. Even my grandmother said, I'm not going to change the habit of a lifetime. Anyway, watch me on Thursday, folks, and uh, look after yourselves, and thank you very much. Cheers, take care, bye-bye.